Um, hi guys, welcome to another episode of the Grapplers Academy. Today we're going through basically a rant and all of our pet peeves on hygiene. Uh, we, go, we talk about our number one uh, most pet peeve, which you'll have to listen to to find out. And then we go on about personal hygiene, my hygiene, and how to be respectful to your training partners and stay clean. That's it. It's not all about sort of your own personal hygiene. It's about respecting everybody else on the mat and looking after those as well as yourself. And stop being so dirty. Clean. <laughs> stay clean. Make sure you shower and cut your nails. Yeah. They're my two biggest gripes with yeah, yeah. grappling. I think which, which one's at the top of the list? Would you rather roll with somebody stinky or would you rather get caught up with somebody with long nails? You know what? I'd rather roll with somebody with long nails, to be fair, than someone stinky. Just because, like... For me, the, the thought of the bacteria that's been sort of like sitting in their skin and their clothes, it's, yeah. And that's where like you get all the nastiness and mm. ringwormy and stuffy and nah. Yeah, well, there's that, but then there's also like the fungal culture that some people have got going on underneath the nails. So not only do you get oh. the cut, but then you also get that uh, foot fungal bacteria as well. Yeah, no, I didn't even think of that. To, to be fair, if, some, if somebody just stinks... And but then it's not like you know, you're not going to get a uh, ringworm or a skin infection from it. I'd rather roll with somebody stinky. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. If I can yeah. be sure that they're, they're like this sort of skin infection free, then yeah, yeah. The, the stink I'll take because I think everyone's got that one rash guard that just, um, no matter, no matter how many times you're cleaning it now, it's just got a little bit of a pungent odor to it. Odor oh, yeah, mat. oh, yeah, I'm not, um, I'm not talking like sort of the the old rash guard smell, I'm talking like they've come straight from another workout, kind of. Oh, yeah. Like, no, I get that it well. happens sometimes, like, <clears throat> but where possible, try to avoid it. Yeah, it's just, yeah. <clears throat> it's, yeah, it's pretty disgusting, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, just have a shower or at least baby wipes. I mean, I've always got baby wipes in my bag with me. Um, mm -hmm. Like, if it's, if I'm going straight post workout and I've got, not got enough time to have a shower or I've got to drive somewhere to go to training. It's a baby wipe job. Yeah. Um, and then I'm, I always keep my nails short. I don't... I've got like nail, I've got nail clippers in my car. Yeah. Like if, if I can itch myself or scratch myself, yep. then they're too long. Yeah. Or if I can pick my nose, they're too long. <clears throat> yeah. Well, don't do that on the mats either. Well, unless, you're yeah. gonna, unless you're going to wipe it on somebody's <laughs> gear. <Yeah. laughs> Um, for, like fingernails, yeah, obviously, but cut your toenails as well. <laughs> yeah, toenails. I think people forget about that. It's like, why would you ignore fifty percent of the human body? <laughs> you've got, you've got nails on your feet. Cut them as well, please. Follow Dean Lister's advice. Follow Dean Lister's advice. John Dyer's anthology on nail cutting. <laughs> yeah, like when I, when I first started training, I, I was I was uh, one of those that would forget the toenails every now and again. Mm. Um. But it was more people like when I'm catching it in my in my socks, I'd be like, oh, I forgot about them. But now it's sort of like, yeah, the, as soon as the, as soon as the fingernails are getting done, the toenails get checked straight away. Yeah, it's like um, like once a week job, isn't it? Yeah, it's not it's not difficult. Everybody should be doing it. Get mm -hmm. wash your geese as well. I think like rather than just making sure that you're cleaning yourself, like make sure you wash your geese because one, it's got all your sweat on it. Two, it's got your partner's sweat on it. And you know, if we're, if we're in normal times, that's probably like 10 other people sweating it as well. Yeah. And it's got all the dirt from the mats because I don't know if anybody's ever looked at the gear after they've rolled it. You, you basically just taken a dishcloth to the floor and just rubbed it around in sweat and dirt and everybody's um, foot sweat on the floor as well. So yeah. don't uh, wash, your, wash your geese every time after you've done a training session. Plus, um, it's been a bit of a battle as well. There's going to be some sort of knuckle abrasion or some sort yeah. of abrasion on the skin. Or even just a bust lip or nose, and there tends to be at least one gi on the mat with speckles of blood on it. Yeah, um, yeah. and just yeah, it's just for your own safety. Make sure that you're washing your training equipment, like gis especially. And like one thing I like to do is uh, if when possible, is let it hang dry, air dry outside. Um, kills the bacteria. 
especially if the sun shines out. Um, but yeah, just make sure and give it time to dry. Yeah, yeah. If you've only got one gig, like some people have, you, you, maybe you've got to um, leave days in between your training days or or something like that. If it's not going to dry immediately for that, because it takes quite a long time to dry sometimes, don't they? Mm. Um, but yeah, you've got to you've got to have a clean gig. You've got to wash it after every training session. I think one thing with that though, as well, if if you are if you have only got one gi and for whatever reason, like for you, it could be worth asking somebody if they've got a spare gi you can borrow for a while. Mm. Like I know that if somebody comes to me and says, look, "Look, I really want to train more gi, but I can only get one gi at the moment for whatever reason," it's a really chance I could borrow one. And over my ten years of training, I've accrued a, like a couple, quite a few gis. I'm more than happy to share them, um, yeah. and like I could, like I said, I've got, I've got spare gears that um, that I take to that I take to classes as well. So it's there's always going to be spare gears around as well if you are wanting to train more than your current number of gears would allow you. Yeah, I've got a couple of loaner gears down at Flow. Um, most most clubs have probably got loaner gears as well for people mm. trying to do it on like trial sessions and stuff like that. So. Yeah. You know, if you if you are that person who's uh, missing a gear for extra training and you want to train every day of the week, pretty much every club's got a loan of gear, haven't they? Yeah. Um, so you should be fine from that point of view. <clears throat> uh, well, it's like shoes off the shoes off the mat and on the mat. That's the big biggest one. Yeah. So one, don't go off the mats and come back on the mats barefooted. Make sure you leave, if you're on the, you should be on the mats barefooted. Have some slides or at least your trainers next to it if you need to go to the bathroom yeah. or you need to run to your bag to get your gun guard or whatever. Um, and then as soon as you come back, te- like don't step on the mats with your shoes on. Um, mm-hmm. And this is probably more applicable for like people starting new to a club because this is always one that gets drilled out of people straight away. Like don't come on the mats with your shoes on. Yeah. Because you've got to think you've been outside, uh, all the dirt, that's on on the pavements and maybe in the car park chewing gum like uh, dog poo you know whatever whatever is on the roads on the pavement that's what you're walking on the mats mm. and then you're going to go and rub your face close to the floor on the mat um do, yeah that's if you just think about it logically for a second would you go and rub your face on the pavement probably not yeah so you don't want that on the mats do you and, no, and i think most people probably don't even think about it um and i think well bit, like if you do need to step off the mat like say you, your slides are a bit far away you've got to step off the mats with them nowadays like just washing your feet down or even alcohol gel just on the feet just to kill anything that could be on there um doesn't take much to sort of have a minimum standard of hygiene like yeah but the shoes like you said it's that's that's a big pet peeve of mine and that's sort of like whenever somebody comes for a trial at Hive first thing it says it said we've got we've got um, two rules no shoes on the mat no shoes on, uh, no bare feet off the mat anything else ask me and I'll clear it up for you but that sort of like tends to be one of the first things that gets sort of said to them yeah definitely and then the third rule that people always ask about is eye gouging or eye pokes is always yeah. the next one, isn't it? <laughs> and you say it depends whether it's the whether yeah. it's the Krav Maga class or whatever. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? I was going to say something then. Yeah, slides. Slides is easy. Like just having your trainers there is easy as well, isn't it? Um, I think as well, washing your slides. Like yeah. when you get in the shower, just swill at the very at the bare minimum, swill them down. Um, at the end of your day or at the end of your session because you're still taking the sweat off the mat onto your slides and then wherever you go from there. Yep. So that's something as well that I, me personally, I didn't sort of cotton on to until my first pair of slides started to really stink. Mm. And I was like, I only wear these for training. I don't do anything else with them. And I was like, oh, I sweat in training as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, so like, why is it important? Like, people might be thinking, "What? Why do I need to wash or have a shower in between training sessions?" Like, skin infections are nasty, and yeah. one, it means you're gonna have a nasty skin infection, which can spread all over your body. Two, it means you can't train. Don't be 
and I also wouldn't train with a skin infection because you're going to yeah. pass it on to your training partners. And I tell you what, you're going to get more than the accidental elbow to the face if you start passing staff, particularly staff. Yeah. Ringworm. Yeah, maybe every maybe everybody's had ringworm at one point in time or whatever. Um, that's not as big of a deal as staff. Staff's a real big issue. It's dangerous. Yeah. Google <laughs> Google some images of staff. Like if you Kevin want to scare Randall yourself, go and look at Kevin, yeah, Kevin Randleman. If you want to scare yourself, go and have a look at that. Um, but like, yeah, it's, it's, it's a big one. It's really important. Do not yeah. let people having staff. Do not come onto the mats having staff. And if you're coming on with dirty shoes um, and you've got like a, you know, everyone on the skin's got, I think you've got staff on your skin all the time, haven't you? But it's when you get like little nicks or cuts mm. um, and that's where it gets in. And then if you've got dirt getting in with that as well, you're massively up in the chances of getting a skin infection. So that, that is why we're saying it's important. Yeah. So I think uh, uh, if for those that watched our last technique video, you might have noticed that I had a blue glove on with the old uh, oil check meme. Um, and that was actually because I had ringworm on the back of my hand. Um, and I couldn't train that week. And I had, like, whenever I was sort of using my hand for person to person contact, it was with the glove on, annoyingly. Um, but yeah, like, ringworm, it's more annoying than anything but apparently i was reading for some cases it can be quite painful and it can be quite itchy i've been quite fortunate is i've only had it less than a handful of times and i pretty much have the antifungal cream in my cupboard just for odd occasions even though i've not had it that often mm. um, but don't do what the wrestlers in america or even like what as i think keenan connie said that he's done this as well where put bleach on it taped it up and left it for like a couple of hours don't do that go to your chemist get some cream uh if it gets worse go to your doctor and get a proper consultation uh, yeah I, was, I remember listening to that episode of the matt ben podcast where they were talking about bleaching like i think he was saying as well like they were putting bleach under a plaster <laughs> and then going training and coming back and it basically is just burnt a square hole in your skin um, and that's the other thing as well. If you have got a little um, skin infection like that, like covering it up and getting heat and sweating on it more by training is just going to aggravate it a lot more and it's going to spread more. Yeah. Um, like just don't train for two weeks or a week mm. or whatever it is just until it's cleared up. Yeah, um, there's plenty of other stuff that you can do. Like it could yeah. be a time for you to just heal your injuries, uh, study something, watch old episodes of this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Um, like, even the S and C, like what, get like a just solid week of uh, weight training. That's a big one, though, isn't it? That's dangerous, or it can be a lot more dangerous. Like you probably, you most likely you're going to end up on antibiotics, yeah, uh, which isn't good for you in general. You know, great antibiotics, uh, amazing for like uh, helping you get over serious uh, problems when you've got them. But like you want to try and avoid being on antibiotics as much as possible. Yeah. Um, so if you can avoid getting staff and you can stay off it that way, great. But yeah, it's like staff can be a life-threatening, uh, life-threatening infection. Um, yeah, I've known people to be in hospital with it. Yeah. Um, it's not a it's not a pleasant uh, condition to have. Yeah. And right now with uh, double down on Corona. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's kind of being in hospital is kind of the last thing that you want, isn't it? With a suppressed immune system. Yeah. Um, yeah, so like top tips for staying hygienic and safe is just like have clean feet, have clean cut nails, clean your clothes, make sure you do all of the above before and after sessions. Um, just be on top of it all week. Mm. Uh, some good hygiene products like baby wipes are good, they're easy. Uh, you can get soaps um, that are kind of, kind of designed specifically for combat sports. Yeah, um, I do a great line for those. Yeah. Um, I think you can find them on Instagram and on the internet, um, IDWE Pure. Um, you can also get like barrier creams as well. Um, I've used a couple. I can't quite remember the name of the brand. Um, but they, it's like a foam, rub over your skin, and it just provides a barrier from the bacteria to your skin. Um, and they're proven to be like highly, highly successful in actually stopping the infections from getting in. Mm. And I think, I don't know if you've noticed it, like you'll see some players where they'll shave their arms and their legs 
Um, and I, I've, I've only found this out in, in recent years where during training when your sort of hairs get ripped out, the hair follicle there is classed as an open wound and bacteria can actually get inside there and infect it. Now, I might be all wrong on that, but that's what I've been told and it kind of makes sense in my head. So it kind of makes sense why people do shave their legs in, in grappling. Yeah, you could probably kind of look at it both ways, I guess. Couldn't you? I've, I've not heard that argument before myself. I guess like there's then the potential of getting more open wounds by sh shaving. You know? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and then you're probably going to be stubbling, stubble rubbing everybody. <laughs> rub, rub, rub. Yeah, you, <laughs> the stub rub. You, might, you might not make any friends being that guy. <laughs> um, but like, I tell you, here's one that, well, one that people might not be thinking about and then one that is another age-old debate. We'll, we'll do the one that people might not think about first is like gum shields. <clears throat> Clean your gum shields. Like, it sounds obvious. You're putting it in your mouth. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so that's that's an easy one. But the, the what's your well, what's your opinion I've, on that? Like, see, I, I, don't, I personally, I don't wear gum shields. Um, yeah. I know that I should do because my gums, my, my, my lips get cut to ribbons sometimes. Mm. But 100%, like, don't reboil your gum shields. You can actually get um, little tablets that you can put in a lukewarm solution with your gum shield and it cleans it. Um, oh, just come to my mind as well. That uh, barrier cream that is from a company called Cornermans. And they are a, they are a UK brand as well. Um, but yeah, you can get, like, tablets that will clean your um, gum shield for you. Just leave it in a solution and it does it. Um, but I was going to say on the, on the same note as well, for those that wear groin guards, clean your groin guard as well. Yeah. Like, I think that's another one that gets forgotten about. Yeah, I think, so, uh, and again, in a, in a same vein, is that different from the one that I'm going to go on about? It's just like, if you if you are doing striking, make sure you're trying to like, maybe those silica gel pads that you can put inside your gloves just to kind of extract some of the moisture from the inside. Keep shin pads as well. Yeah, head guards. Uh, it's all the same sort of stuff. Like the inside of that material gets really, uh, it's it's soft fabric and it absorbs a lot of moisture, doesn't it? Mm. Um, and even for like, like pad holders. Yeah, pad holders. Pad yeah. holders like cause with um with any of my gloves and my my pads, I use uh, like a Dettol <coughs> Dettol spray. Yeah. Spray it inside it, stuff it with an old pair of socks. Obviously, clean the socks in between as well. Um, but yeah, just to absorb any extra moisture and try to kill as much bacteria as I can. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and the, well, the, the one that always gets brought up and some people are like definitely do it and other people are like absolutely don't do it is do you wash your gi belt? If no, you wash your gi belt, are you going to lose all your gains? Hey, yeah, you lose your jiu-jitsu skills, you lose yeah, your yeah. powers. Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> wash it yeah i don't know why people like there seems to be some sort of uh mythic legend that if you wash your jiu-jitsu belt you washing away your gains it's like no i'll lose my skills my baron bolo's <laughs> getting worse no. <laughs> no if someone doesn't clean the belt they're gonna get a knee cut that's gonna be very mistimed misplaced sorry <laughs> Mistimed and misplaced. <laughs> <laughs> mistimed and misplaced. Um, what's a more heinous crime, getting the stub rub <laughs> or getting a dirty belt in the face? <laughs> Ooh. To be fair, I'd say the dirty belt in the face because, like, stub rub, like, if you're phonically challenged like myself and, like, me and, your, me and yourself, it's sort of like, it's kind of, we have to do it to keep the, the hair down. It's going to be in there. It's a, it's a technique as far as I'm concerned. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Someone gets a little graze in the cheekbone because they're not letting me pass the guard. I'm uh, <laughs> doing all this. <laughs> the, the microphone head treatment. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, well, drop it in the comments as well, guys. What, would you rather roll with somebody who's got the, the long toenails or a dirty belt? I think those two seem to be like top in the, top in the list. Do you rather get cut up by long toenails or do you want to roll with the guy with the dirty belt and have that dangling in your face? I think, to be honest, I know what my answer is. Yeah, I think I know mine there. I think yeah. I'd go with the... I'd rather roll with somebody with a dirty belt than yeah. someone else. I, 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 
for me, the, the, that most heinous crime is the dirty, long nails. Because they just cut you up. But the worst thing is, though, as well, like, say it's, like, at the back of your neck or, like, it's somewhere that you don't actually see it. You get in the shower and you're, like, you're sort of there having a nice yeah. little shower and then, ah, what's that? And your neck <laughs> or your face or somewhere's burning. <clears throat> Because you've got an open wound from someone's like scratch right across. There is one that you'll probably have dealt with as well before yourself is like when somebody's playing colours or something like that, that drag down your head and then you've got to go and shave your head. Thanks. Uh, you know who you are. <laughs> I'm not naming names, but you know who you are. <laughs> That's why I go so long between actually shaving my hair off. <laughs> like, I just don't, because it gets dead sensitive. I'm sort of like going, like nearly in tears because of the just the friction. <laughs> Maybe we need to release like um, a Grapplers Academy branded set of clippers. <laughs> <laughs> the, f- the first product on the list. What is the most important thing to improve at jujitsu? Clean nails. <laughs> Clean nails. Yeah, nail clippers. And I thought you meant hair clippers. Uh, well, yeah, we could go with those as well. Yeah. Um, Get more sensitive on the uh, on the top of the head. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the TGA pedicure set. <laughs> <laughs> What's your um, thoughts on uh, having a mat side towel? <laughs> communal or personal? <laughs> <laughs> we'll, go, we'll go with personal. Um, I sweat a lot. Uh, I'm going to be honest, I've never... Well, yeah, that, no, that's a lie. I've brought a mat side towel to the gym sometimes. Um one well depends so yeah i'll definitely use it if i'm sweating a lot like if i've just got my gi to hand to be honest i'm probably just gonna rub it on my gi yeah i've got no hair to catch my sweat i just sweat a lot um so i don't think it's fair on my training i I would rather go and off the off the mat for two seconds to wipe my head with the towel or wipe it on my gi rather than sweating on my partner yeah because let's be honest who wants to be under the person who's just dripping sweat like an open tap oh 100 percent yeah. Like, I'm the same. Like, when I can remember it, I will have one. But it's more, like, it, I do it, like, obviously out of consideration for my partners, but it's more to, to do with stopping the sweat from going into my eyes. <laughs> so I can just see what I'm doing. Maybe you should get a um, grade-appropriate headband. That would be amazing, actually. Like a yeah, tennis one. I'd be like, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking, like, 118, 118. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> I need to have more hair for that, though. <laughs> just, grow, just grow a moustache. <laughs> just grow a moustache and start a trend. You can look like an NBA player. That I'm Well, come November, I'm definitely going for it anyway, so... Oh, my God, yes. Yeah, next competition, strutting on with the... Uh, if the, When the ref gives you the little band to put over your wrist, pop it on your head. Stretch it out. <laughs> yeah. That might not be a bad chat. I can imagine... Can you... <laughs> Can you imagine being the guy who turns up to class or like you go to a no-gi club and their thing isn't belts, they've got to wear like grade appropriate headbands. <laughs> uh, definitely wash them as well if you've got those. Washers. Yeah, please do wash them as well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, any closing thoughts on the matter of hygiene, mate? Just do your best to keep on top of it. Mm. Like eat. Also as well, like another thing... Give yourself time to cool down after training before you shower because otherwise you'll continue sweating and then you'll still end up with some sort of issue. Yeah, or, or oftentimes, like when you finish the tough training session, if you get whether you know if you've been in the gym or on the mats, you get in the shower and get out sweating more yeah. than you did before you started training. Um, it's kind of like that boiling the bag effect, isn't it? Mm. Um, yeah. But, but I suppose at least you've got the dirt and the filth of the mats yeah. off you at that point. <clears throat> and just like even further, actually, I suppose on what we've talked about today, most clubs are awesome at it that I've been, but like um, h- hygiene from the gym's point of view. Oh, like yeah. Make, yeah. Sure the, make sure the mats are clean. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I say we, we steam our mops, steam our mat, mops, steam our mats. Uh, and it's not even that. It's not even that time. It doesn't take too much time. Like once it's done. 
No, for the uh, <clears throat> for the amount of issues that it's saving, like 15, 20 minutes of cleaning the mats at the end at a max is yeah. like well worth it. Um, especially if it's going to mean people are able to come in and train all the time and not have to be off because they've got skin infections or like that might just even put somebody off being a member of the gym if, if the mats are just filthy. Um, so there's that side of it as well. No, definitely. But uh, if you've got any thoughts on um, that hygiene and sort of even just play to play hygiene, drop your comments below. Let us know any of your pet peeves as well. Like, mm -hmm. you've got a Matt Hygiene pet peeve, let us know what it is. Um, you've heard mine and Bond's little pet peeves for, for all this. <laughs> toenails, especially. Yeah, toenails, especially. I think that tops our list. Toenails and fingernails that are dirty and long. Yeah, um, <clears throat> yeah kind of like semi-discussion, semi-rant today from us. Uh, I think we've discussed these issues in a couple of other podcasts. I think if I remember rightly as well, when we had uh, Violet and Lorna on, they were talking about cleanliness of, of mats yeah. and training partners as well. So, you know, be respectful uh, to your training partners um, as well as thinking about your own personal safety and hygiene. You yeah. know, it's a, it's a team sport at the end of the day, as, as much as we all like to think it's an individual sport. So have a bit of respect for your training partners and stay clean, as yeah. Jocko would say. <laughs> And don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe button, share with all your friends, share the timeline, share our statuses, spread the word. We're trying to just educate everybody in grappling. Um, up your game, up, improve your sort of quality of uh, grappling as well, and improve your journey. If there's anything you'd like us to talk about as well, make sure you hit us up and we'll do our best to cover it. Yeah, that extends to like any guests that... Um... Uh, listeners think would be, be be beneficial to have on or they want to hear us have a chat with as well um, we've got quite we're building up quite a decent archive now of technique videos there's a lot of discussions on there as well um, from everything from strength and conditioning to recovery to like what does your beginning journey to starting jiu-jitsu look like for anybody who wants to start jiu-jitsu and is nervous and uh, maybe seems like a bit of a step too far for them go and listen to that beginning journey for uh, jiu-jitsu uh, help you put your mind at rest there's, there's loads of great info on there we, we cover quite a lot on that one I, I, I don't know it, it can be quite a daunting journey to start jiu-jitsu uh, yeah. we want everybody involved there's, there's loads of there's loads of info out there as well um, for you to kind of be happy find a good club and um, you start your journey yeah definitely it's never too late to start training no never and definitely see the benefits of it like, yeah. especially in such in a time where sort of socially it's a bit like everyone's sort of isolating themselves at the moment get yourselves involved in a great community um yeah and yeah just enjoy it 100 percent of people who do jiu-jitsu that started later always say this number one thing is i wish i would have started younger yeah I, i've heard that so many times like i wish i would have started younger i wish i would have started in my early 20s uh, or 30s or 40s like people start in their 60s <laughs> yeah. um don't put it off Oh, no. But it's also it's also never too late. So join the, join the community. It's a great, we love it. It's a great community to be part of. Um, but yeah, anything you guys want to see, hit us up. Um, social media is at the Grapplers Academy. Uh, podcast platforms: the Grapplers Academy, YouTube, uh, the Grapplers Academy. Basically, Google at the Grapplers the Grapplers Academy, and you'll probably find anything that we've got up on there. Yeah, um, and we'll be releasing pedicure sets soon. Yeah. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.